We begin tonight in the Thai Caves where 12 schoolboys and their football coach are waiting to be rescued. This afternoon news that one of the men trying to rescue them has died. A former Thai Navy SEAL who was part of a highly experienced dive team placing oxygen tanks along the route out. All week we've been hearing from people who've been in the caves that rescuing the boys will involve overcoming extraordinary odds. No one believed there would be such a terrible demonstration of that before the boys had even left their shelter point. And a short time ago the question on everyone's lips was asked by a journalist to the commander of the Navy SEALs. If it is so dangerous that a former SEAL died in the cave, does that not mean it is too dangerous to bring children through? Yes, yes, yes. So does but, that... But uh, we, we try everything for the, the, best, the best way to help them. CNN's David McKenzie is at the cave site and I spoke to him shortly before we came on here. The tragedy happened in the early hours of this morning, Thailand time, Samran Kunan, uh, mid-30s, former Navy SEAL diver. You know, Don, he left private practice. He had, had resigned from the, the Navy. He came back to be of service of his country, bring his special skills to this extraordinary rescue attempt. And uh, he was taking oxygen tanks into the cave system because the oxygen levels are depleting rapidly, both where the rescue uh, divers have their underground staging point and also where the uh, boys are further down the cave system. So there's a, a real sense of loss and resolve here this morning in Thailand. Uh, and I'm looking at those oxygen tanks now that they took in. They're about a meter and a half high, big cumbersome tanks that they'd have to negotiate through these narrow passageways and uh, this man uh, did his best but um, you know it really does show how challenging it is even for professionals and former professionals to do this this work to try get these boys out and also there is no margin for error in parts of, of the of these caves right that some of it is uh, the water is moving very very fast the water is very muddy and there is no visibility uh, the space between the floor and the ceiling is very very narrow there is so much that can go wrong and this guy was working with a buddy right he wasn't alone well they are working with buddies and uh, it, it does seem like he had an issue with his air either he ran out of air but what is clear is that he passed out while making that dive. Any of your listeners who've been uh, diving before recreationally know that even in you know not great conditions, it can be uh, difficult. Now consider this: that as you say, it's a, a, a moving current, no visibility. You're working with a guideline under the ground, and most importantly, and I spoke to a, a specialist cave diver uh, just just hours ago. He said, "Is the fear factor? You are." covered by a roof over your head at all times. There's no escape route. You have to just uh, deal with it, and psychologically, it's incredibly difficult. Now, again, for these young boys to undertake this kind of extreme diving situation with no training, it, it's hard to kind of imagine at this point how they're going to pull it off, but they are certainly trying. Oh, I see the admirable, uh, sorry, the admiral at the scene, he may be an admirable admiral, he says that uh, th they won't let this man's life be in vain, we will carry on, he says. What is the mood uh, from the families now? Because there was such euphoria when, when the boys and their coach were discovered, but how are they feeling now? I'm sure it's a, a, a terrible reality check again for them of how challenging this is, because, you know, there was euphoria when the boys and their coach were found, uh, we spoke to several uh, extended family members, teachers and others who've set up uh, small shrines. Uh, uh, one counsellor making the, the young students build uh, or make origami birds because she said it represents freedom. So this whole community is pulling together. But I think this moment is uh, a dark moment in this rescue operation. Perhaps it will have a happy ending, but certainly the parents who've been kept away from the media, understandably, are going to be feeling extremely distressed today if they weren't already. David McKenzie, who is CNN's correspondent at the K.